Tay. Can you guys all say Team Tay on three? One, two, three. Hi, I'm Mary Ann. Welcome to Teen Say, where teens can have their say, adults can see where they're coming from. Now that the communication lines are open, let's get started. Today I'm here with Sarah, right, from Anova Concussion Clinic, also known as Loudon Head to Head. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So could you tell us what you do at Anova? I know we spoke to you in some interviews there, which we're going to show, but mm -hmm. tell us a little about what you do. Um, as part of our concussion clinic, we have a whole team that works together with the, with the patients. Um, when they come in, usually the kids go to the emergency room and they get a prescription from, from the ER or they sometimes just go to their PCP and they get the prescription and they come in and the first person they usually see is the physical therapist. We have a team of therapists, I'm just one of the team. Um, and we do a series of tests. Well, first we interview and find out how the concussion happened, go over symptoms, try to figure out the headaches and try to figure out whether the headache is concussion or musculoskeletal or even dehydration kind of a headache. We try to figure out the dizziness, if it's a hypotension kind of thing or if it's a true vertigo from the vestibular system being affected. Um, and so after the interview, we do a series of tests. We check out the oculomotor system. Which we're gonna show. This okay. is a piece, what you're holding are binocular um, goggles for our video oculography. Okay. Um, this is a high-tech piece of equipment right. and we have certified vestibular therapists and trained and PTs. This is one of This them. is Linda Viteri who is I one of am. our experts uh, who nice can actually you. demonstrate this um, piece of equipment for you. So why would we, why would we test someone's Sometimes on this? after a concussion uh, a lot of the uh, young people have uh, dizziness or headaches uh, and we put these on and this shows us if there are any abnormal eye movements which might be indicative of uh, the messaging going from brain cell to brain cell not going accurately. Uh, so just another tool in our assessment box. Wow, great. Okay. What's really cool about this piece of equipment though is that you just have to sit with the goggles on and Linda can see what your eye movements look like, so it's very objective. You can't fake it, you no. can't, it's, it's, you know, you, your eyes are going to do what they're going to do. You're completely dark, so you're not seeing anything, but she can watch your eyes move. Well, that's so exciting. it is. Do you want to demonstrate for it? Um, sure. We can okay. do it. Would you, would you like to put them on yeah. and you wear them? You want to be the model? You might be the model. Okay. You just slip the strap over your head. Now you're not going to be able to see out of this. Okay. There goes the hair, huh? I will. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> we, need to get, we need to get your bangs out of the way, Luke. Okay. All right. We're going to have a bad hair day, guys, right after this. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to have you just look straight ahead. Am I looking straight ahead? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I want you to look over to the right. Now hold your eyes there. Okay. And of course, everything looked fine. You didn't have any kind of head injury. So. Yay, I'm good to go. <laughs> but what Linda might see if That's someone right. did have a concussion was a movement in the eyes. It, yeah. might, it might. We look for abnormal movements, mm -hmm. like a jerkiness of the eyes in one particular mm -hmm. direction or another, mm -hmm. which okay. tells us that the, the brain is still not healed yet. It's just mm -hmm. the, the messaging going through is a little bit inaccurate yet. Okay. So it should be exciting. We're going to yeah. show your balance machine that you're talking yeah. about. So Anne is going to tell us about the balance machine where they can actually test and see what's going on. And the best kept secret we are exposing right now. So Anne, can you tell us a little about this machine and who do we have on the machine? Sure. This is Andrew. He's a, a young athlete. And we, he is on the Neurocom Equitist Balance Manager. And what this machine does is it objectifies the balance system. It can tell us exactly where the strong points are in the balance system, where the weak points are, and if there's a problem with the brain interpreting the information. So it's a good inside look at the balance system. Wow. Okay. Wow. So are we going to see something on the screen as well as watching Andrew? Yes. So what we have here is there's several different conditions that we put Andrew through. The first one was just standing still, eyes open. This next condition, Andrew, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and close your eyes now, okay? Okay. Ready? And begin. So now he's standing steady with his eyes closed and the force platform that he's standing on is documenting the amount of sway that he has. So it's looking, does he have a lot of forward and backward sway? Does he have a lot of, um, does he keep the center of gravity over his base of, su of support? And it's just giving a good clinical picture of his balance. And now he's exaggerating a little bit to show you how it moves. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, Andrew, your balance is really off. <laughs> 
Alrighty. So and what do we do when their balance is really off like Andrew just showed us? <laughs> well, at the end of this, it'll show you, it'll give us a printout. When, when we're talking about balance, the brain relies on information from three different systems. It relies on the visual information, the, brain, the information the eyes give to the brain about the environment. Is it steady? And I, am I stable in my environment? It relies on the inner ears, the vestibular system, and that will tell your brain about your head movement in space. Am I bending over to pick something up? Am I going up in an elevator or an escalator? And then what we call the feet, or it's really just your body's awareness in space, your, the nerve endings in your joints will tell your brain where your body is in space. So the brain then has to take all that information, figure out what's going on, and then tell your body what to do. So this machine here, it tells us how effective are the eyes at telling the brain what's going on, how effective is the inner ear, the vestibular system at telling the brain what's going on and how effective is the body at telling the brain what's going on and with concussion what we find is a lot of time the information coming from the vestibular system or from the eyes is actually inaccurate and then this machine will help us figure out is it the eyes is the is it the vestibular system or is it just the brain having a hard time figuring out putting everything together so it helps us isolate where the injury is we check basically in a nutshell it's the eyes the balance system and the inner ear the vestibular system is what we check. Um, I'm going to go around. I'm going to ask you, you can, you're going to tell us your name and how you got your concussion. And then we'll come back to you for your story, okay? All right. Hello. Hi, I'm Casey. Hi, Casey. Um, my concussion came from being hit in the forehead with a soccer ball. Oh, that hurt. Okay. <laughs> what position were you playing? I don't actually play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are you? I'm um, good today. Uh, my name's Thomas. I got most of my concussions through wrestling and playing football through high school and into college. How many concussions did you have? Um, I've had five or six diagnosed, but who knows how many outside of that. Wow. Okay. Have you had more than one concussion? Yes. How many have you had? I've had two. Wow. <laughs> okay. Athletes get a lot of concussions, huh? Hi, I'm Zach, and Hi, I got Zach. my concussion from standing up into an air vent at work. Wow, that was fun. How many concussions have you had? Was this that is your my first? first? Okay, and I see you're still suffering. You're wearing your sunglasses yeah. because of the lights here. Yeah, light and noise mainly. Light and noise. We're going to talk about that more, and I know you'll be able to help us there. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Juliana. Um, Hi, Juliana. I got my concussion from volleyball. I got hit in the back of the head with a volleyball. Wow. Okay. <laughs> How many have you had? I've had two. Okay. Same way, both of them. Um, the first one was uh, whiplash, and it kind of jarred my head a little bit and so I From a car accident? Minor. No, um, volleyball related as well. Okay. Hi. Hi, I'm Maria. Hi, Maria. Um, I got my concussion from playing softball um, and I got it right in the eye and the front and my face. Yeah. That hurt. <laughs> yeah. Did you get knocked out? No, I didn't, but I fell down. Okay. Hello. Hi, I'm Anna. I got Hi, Anna. my concussion playing basketball. I fell on the back of my head. Ah, okay. And how many have you had? Just one. Just one. Okay. okay. That's very good. That's very good. Um, so Sarah, tell us a little about the first 72 hours. What are the rules? So when you first get a concussion, the best thing to do is just stop playing. So some kids don't realize it, and that's why the coaches are really being good about just pulling the kid in no, case there is. Like the first 72 hours, so they've been to the hospital. Oh, so this they've is after been, the, so yeah, I'm talking even on the field, some kids keep going to play. Oh, so I'm okay, go ahead. earlier than that. Sometimes the kids are in the middle of a game, and the adrenaline's going, and they have get a bad head, the head yeah. and they're a little stunned, and they still want to play, and they're begging the coach, put me back in. And, the co oh. and So the coaches are now being more educated about no way you're going to sit, you know, thankfully they're doing that more and more, but we still get kids in sometimes and we're like, really? You were put back in that field and you got hit again? Let's, let's uh, you don't have to have been knocked unconscious to have a concussion. You don't need, actually even have to have had a head injury. If you fall hard enough and jar your brain, you can have a concussion. But what really constitutes mm -hmm. uh, a concussion is a sudden, brief or not so brief disruption of neurological function, uh, loss of consciousness, confusion, dizziness, uh, visual blurring, um, in interruption of vision, and, and very often, uh, in, in the not uh, not so, not long after that, you can start to have nausea, vomiting, unequal pupils. But not kinds, necessarily. Not necessarily. No. So that's, every head injury is so different. They are, and uh, that makes many, it many harder times, for parents. That's correct, and many times uh, the symptoms don't really start to develop until the next day. Let's hear from them. How many of you have um, can playing after you've been hit? Put up your hands. Wow. You All yeah. of you almost. 
Yeah. Okay, so, so there's that's a lot of education that needs to be done on the coaches level, yeah. and it's happening. They're getting better and better about really just even if they're not even sure if the kid seems fine, if the hit looks bad, we just put them aside because there's more kids on the sidelines. Well, let's hear. Did you? Who um, thought that the, they had a concussion as soon as they were hit? Did you realize, or did you just think you got hit in the head? Um, I mean, when you get hit in the head and you really feel like you're oh. suffering from it, you uh, kind of have just like your head starts to hurt right away. You're dizzy. You're kind of disoriented, and you know. But when you're on the field and you're are either doing a sport, you're there for your teammates, doing whatever. I think the generation before really didn't know what it was about and take it as seriously. So the coaches look at their uh, athletes the same way as they were looked at when they were athletes when they were younger. And I think that's like where the education needs to happen. Okay. Wow. Okay. Who else? Did you say yes? You kept playing? Yeah. There was a time. Okay. Did you know you had a concussion? No, I know. I mean, I was just at soccer practice and I thought it was just a hit to the head. Like, Did okay. you feel dizzy? No. I no? didn't get symptoms until the next day. The next so. day. Um, how about you? Um, I kind of knew because I had had one that wasn't really diagnosed to begin with, but when I got hit in the back of the head, it was kind of one of those things where it was my first practice and I didn't really want to stop playing. So mm. I, I kept going and... First um, practice? Yeah, it was the first practice <laughs> of my club season. Oh no. So, so you kept going? Yeah, and... Um, Mom talked about this before. <laughs> after a while, it, it kind of started to bother me. And so, After a while during practice? Yeah, like the more I was moving did, So around. did you stop? No, I, I finished <laughs> the practice, and then uh, when I got home, I kind of addressed it. What do you think about that? I, I was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I know that parental thing, <laughs> having my own teenagers. So did you know when you were hit that you had a concussion? No, I didn't. Um, I thought did I was, you keep playing? Well, it was during warm-ups, and the coach made me, um, we had, I was, on the Sunday before a tournament, and we oh, played two no. games that day, and um, they made me sit on the bench, and I thought, just thought I had like a black eye, and it was on the swollen shut, so I couldn't have played anyway. <laughs> oh, okay, so, so yours was more obvious, because it had bruising. Yeah. So, what about you? And then we're gonna ask Sarah a question about that. I got back up and just kept playing, and we didn't realize it till the next day when I, well that night, I, I had a headache, but I didn't think much of it, and then the next day it was worse, and then the day after that, we finally went to the doctor. Okay, so Sarah, tell us a little about um, the symptoms of a concussion. Well, there's a whole list of symptoms. That briefly, I, just like very briefly, there's there's four categories. The physical category is the headache, the light sensitivity, balance problems, feeling dizzy, um, kind of getting lightheaded when you go to get up. Um, those what about are, the old symptom, like you start projectile vomiting? Well, yes, that can happen too. You can get nauseousness and um, even vomit at the scene, or you can even have a loss of consciousness. Um, so those are the physical. The emotional, some kids just get really quiet and withdrawn. Some kids get really irritable. Big changes in personality. It's just very emotional. Kids breaking down, crying over nothing, and you know the parents are like, who is this kid? This isn't my child anymore. Um, there's also a sleep category. Sometimes when you get a concussion, you just cannot fall asleep to save your life, and then you can't stay asleep. Um, and the problem is you, your brain heals the most when you are sleeping, so we really try to address that issue and do what we can in the clinic to give you ideas to help you sleep or give you medications or supplements and that kind of thing if, if needed. Okay. Um, and then the other one is the cognitive, the cognitive symptoms. People can get really just foggy, um, decreased concentration, really slow to process. You tell a joke and they don't get it for like a 30 <laughs> second delay. You're like, oh yeah, you know. So. Um, and then just overall fatigue, just really just feeling like you just need to go to sleep all the time so is a big one. Okay, so, so now we're going to hear from them and then we're going to come back to you. So tell us um, when you went to the ER. Did you go to the ER or did you go to your pediatrician? Yeah, I got hit Thursday night and during school on Friday I wasn't getting anything the teacher was saying. My head hurt, I felt nauseous. So Saturday morning we went to the ER um, and they told us just to take Advil. Um, and it would get better. Um, but then they also told us to set up an appointment with Head to Head. Oh, they told you about Head to Head. Yeah. So awesome. we went to the concussion clinic that Tuesday. So okay. I went to school Friday and Monday. And, and then wasn't until were, you, the were you out of school for a little while? Yeah, I was out of school for probably about a week. Yeah. On and off for a while, yeah. actually. She, yeah, she's, <laughs> she still continues to miss some school because of it. Really? Mm -hmm. The headaches are that bad? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Um, how about you? When did you go to the ER? Um, usually, well, the most recent one or... The most <laughs> Wow. Um, okay. Or usually, I think, per usual. So it's yeah. football, wrestling. And yeah. just one fall. One fall. Yeah. Okay, what was the worst one? Um, I would say the worst one is probably my junior year high school. I ended up, um, I got hurt. I hit my head in a match prior, and then I had a headache. A wrestling match. A wrestling match. We're going to see some of that. Is that the one that Dad provided? Yes, it is. Okay. That was intermediate that was, school? Or no, high that was school? the state, AA state wrestling tournament in 2010 down in Salem, Virginia. So we're going to see some footage on that now. And, yeah, and you hit heads, and then your dad points out how as we're watching the video really disoriented afterwards but it was then you got to the line yeah. and all of a sudden you lost balance so he had that balance thing mm -hmm. happening but he was still in the match and he went from winning the match to lose but the end result i lost to somebody who i beat m multiple times but that's just when you get hit in the head and you're disoriented it shows mm -hmm. like how much it can affect your like motor skills and stuff. So you want a repeat for sure. You wanted a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> no one should have their dreams taken away from them. No, no, no. But, but sometimes reality has to has to come into play. And uh, if a if a if a teenager has had multiple traumatic brain injuries and are going to be continuing in a contact sport where um, their risk where they is at increased. risk further, yeah. you know, this can ultimately have. Um, persistent or even lifelong consequences which are just a, completely avoidable by, right. by playing a different sport that's not so likely to result in a head injury. So what'd you do? So did you go to the ER right from the match? Um, afterwards, after the match, like right away, I went downstairs, I went downstairs like into like the locker room and started just, I started throwing up, like having, ah. severe, <laughs> having a severe headache and just like uh, dizziness and it, there's no loss of consciousness, but just headaches afterwards and felt really bad. Okay. So. All right, and what did the ER tell you? Um, I ended up going to the ER afterwards. Uh, it was that one I was diagnosed with a class two concussion. I, they put you in a neck brace right away when you get there because just to make sure, all right, but uh, do a CAT yeah. scan. But I was surprised they didn't do an MRI because when I went to the concussion center, they referred me to a neurologist who actually had an MRI done, which ended up showing scarring on my front left lobe of my brain. So From previous? From previous concussions, because my last one was in the back of my head, but the scarring they found was on the front, which means uh, they never did the MRIs before on that, so it wasn't caught. Wow. Which is kind of surprising. Let's back up a little. So when you were diagnosed with the with this one. <laughs> what did you call it? A class two? Uh, the class two concussion. Class two. Can, Sarah, can you tell us what a, how the classes go? I haven't heard of this. I, I hadn't heard of that either. So It was down <laughs> in southern Virginia. Okay. So. So I don't okay. know. That's just how they classify right, I haven't, it. I've just heard mild, moderate, severe. So I'd say <coughs> so I don't know moderate if that's to moderate. Severe, like okay. Moderate to that. severe? Yeah. Is that what they told you? Yeah, they, they said class two, but I think it just ties into the moderate that right. you're that's, referring to. Sorry for my arm in your face. <laughs> the microphone <laughs> but, to get to and, death. I mean, the, the most interesting thing was I think the point that he hit was a very severe sorry. concussion. And he did go, you know, but a lot of it went undetected. And the one that he sustained slipping about, what, a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. when he went to head to head, the professionalism and the way they diagnose it is amazing compared to what he's gone through before, so. Were you worried, Mom? Let me uh, see if I can get to you. Let me pass you the mic. How's that sound? Okay. I'm mic'd. Go ahead, Super. tell us. Um, I was greatly concerned with this last one. Um, some of the other ones I was concerned as well, but we really weren't that educated. And you know, you go by what the emergency room doctors tell you, and we really didn't know the severity. And when they did the testing at head to head, and they talked about his eye, left eye not doing, you know, moving correctly or whatever. Let's they, back up. So, did the hospital tell you to go to head to head? How did we find out about head to head? Um, it was from a pediatric doctor. Okay. The pediatric. So they basically they sent you to a concussion clinic right from away. From sixth grade, when he had his first one, up until this one, and he's now 21. Um, we had never been told about head-to-head -head until this last one. Or, you know, there are a few in the area, yeah. so yeah. yeah. And, well, we had never been told about any of them. We were just told to take it easy, you know, uh, don't be on your phone or the computer or the TV, you know, consistently. The first 72 hours. Yeah. And so... Did uh, he follow the rules? Well, he's 21, so I didn't monitor him, uh, you know, Did you follow the rule? Well, I mean, yeah, with the most recent one, Yeah, yes. I don't know if we can hear you. 
Uh, with the most recent concussion, yes, I actually did listen for. Well, for the most part, you do as, you do as well as you can because I mean there's certain that, things. Does yeah. that mean you were in more pain, so you actually listened, or you I mean, were scared it was just that? More, it is kind of <laughs> eye-opening when you see someone who actually knows what they're talking about on the subject, and they tell you, "Well, you're not actually going to get better until you start doing the things that you need to do." Just like any other, like a muscle or bone, your brain it needs time to heal, and you need to do certain things to heal it, and that's. I think the first time that I was really kind of like told by someone that really knew what they were talking about. Meaning the, the, like the people con the at the clinic? The stuff at the concussion clinic, yes. Right, so uh, you were glad to find them. It was a big help. Yeah, it was. What does the concussion clinic do for them? Well, it provides what I guess you could best refer to as an infrastructure of care. Um, okay. A lot of time, there are a lot of issues that people have um, regarding concussion, lots of questions. Uh, oftentimes there's the need for physical therapy. Uh, for balance therapy, oh. um, for uh, supervising cognitive. supervising yes. levels of gradually increasing activity, cognitive rehabilitation. So I know somebody else in the audience went to the ER twice before they got recommended to a concussion clinic. Ah, back there, we'll talk to them in a minute. So. And the reason we are here, as I told Anne, um, we had some history. We went to the hospital with my daughter having a concussion, and we didn't know about head to head, and we had a hard time. We wound up going to the ER a second time for headaches and severity and issues, and I thought it was the best kept secret. And when I found head to head, oh my gosh, they understood what we were going through. They did not over medicate us. They didn't medicate us, and they helped us through it. We had so when I found them, I was able to understand more about what I needed to do. It wasn't just the acute you know, onset quickly to the hospital, finding out you had a concussion, there was more to do, I felt. Um, but I guess some of them, the neurologists we spoke to said, some of them actually just don't even go to a concussion clinic, they get over it within a couple of weeks and those are the lucky ones. But mm -hmm. most of the time with athletes such as yourselves, they have more than one concussion and I guess the severity is worse? Yeah, yeah, every time you have another concussion after another, then the symptoms can get worse and worse. Um, but you'd be surprised, and some of the fresh concussions can have a really hard time. Every kid is different, every metabolism is different, every hit's different, every amount of injury is different, so every kid is different, you never know. And the kids who actually vomit and lose consciousness, you think, oh, that must have been severe. terrible. Yeah. Sometimes those kids bounce back in two weeks, and, you're, and I'm amazed when I see them, I'm like, really, you were out for an hour, and they're doing fine. And then you get a kid who didn't think it was anything, they kept playing, and and they're coming back to the clinic for six, eight weeks. You know, it's just, you never know. What about, what, what was your name? Uh, Thomas. So what about what Thomas said? How do you have, I mean, that's gotta be worrisome to parents to hear that he had a number of concussions and there's scarring on an MRI mm -hmm. on the front, frontal lobe? Uh, yeah, on the front left lobe. Right, so um, that's, that's pretty severe. Dr. Tamala is a neuroradiologist mm -hmm. here at MRI of Reston. Yep. 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 Now we're going to talk about some cool, open MRI machine. What is an MRI and what is a CT? So basically <laughs> with, with CTs, uh, CTs use x-rays so that they can see different tissues in the body. MRI on the other hand uses magnets, like a magnetic field, okay. and so you don't get radiation and so forth. It's safer, obviously, you don't have the risks of, let's say, radiation that you would get with a CAT scanner. Would they repeat CTs often if the symptoms kept going, if, if the symptoms progressed? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the main thing is that if the first head CT is normal, mm -hmm. in the setting of, say, a, a brain, brain trauma or a brain injury, then they won't really do another CT. They'll do an MRI at that point. Okay. <coughs> Um, so how long does an MRI take? So an MRI typically takes about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, it depends on what they're looking at, you know, if they're injecting any IV dye into your uh, veins and things like that, but usually about 30 to 45 minutes. Does it hurt? Uh, no pain. Basically, you sit in the scanner. It looks like a donut, you know, but in this case, in an open MRI, it's a half a donut. And, um, and that's not going to give them that claustrophobic right. feeling? So you won't, yeah, most people get claustrophobic, you know, and so in this case, you won't get that feeling. They'll give you headphones. You can listen to music. They'll skip. You just have to lay there. That's the hardest part. That and hold your breath every once in a while when they ask you to. Gotcha. And we actually we had one child who had so much neck pain going on, and she'd had X-rays done, and I think she did have a CAT scan done at the time for injury, and she just kept having more and more pain. So we they sent her to get an MRI. She had a broken neck. <gasps> she, yeah, and all her injury was somebody pulled a chair out from underneath her 
and she fell back and hit her head on the back of the chair. Mm -hmm. So that's why I guess they would go to the ER mm -hmm. um, on the onset of their head injury. And right. then, of course, if it continued, seek help with a concussion clinic. And we've already established that they don't need a prescription to come to you guys. Then you can so. just come in. But back to the 72-hour thing, as soon as you get hit, that first 72 hours, the symptoms, like you said, you didn't feel bad till the next day. That's why we say just shut the child down for 72 hours, put them in a nice, dark, quiet place, low level lights and noise and feed, let them sleep and then just feed them the proteins and the blueberries and the spinach and you know, all the stuff All the stuff you guys want to eat right after a head injury. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to ask them a few questions that I want to hear about. You, went, you had an MRI too? No, um, I was, <laughs> I had a, when I had the whiplash, we went to the ER because I was having a severe neck pain and um, it was very painful in the back of my head. So we went to the um, ER and they said, well, you have migraines every once in a while, so we're going to treat it as a migraine. So they medicated me and I was in there for a long time. Well, um, there's again no standardized protocol anywhere in the country for this, although I think a lot of it has to do with the considered medical judgment of the of the yeah. emergency physician um, that anything could happen depending on the severity of the situation from admission to the hospital to discharge home uh, with most of the time in mild traumatic brain injuries and mild concussions which is what we most of the time see when kids have sports related injuries in school or in club sports um, the, the, uh, the patient is sent home with a set of written instructions uh, and, and that's usually what happens Sometimes uh, there's a referral made to a concussion clinic. This is more and more the case. The chiropractor that I go to regularly was noticed that there was some issues with my neck, and he said, well, I think you should get it checked out. And the nurse at my school... Did he adjust you after your concussion, or he didn't touch your neck? No, he... He, he adjusted my neck. After the whiplash. After the whiplash, she was adjusted. How many hours was that after? I, we have heard, right, from a few cases that the first 72 hours, we should not be adjusted. I think, again, common sense, like uh, well, staying quiet. Um, it's almost, it's very similar to anyone who's ever had an acute severe migraine headache. You don't want too much noise. You don't want too much commotion. You don't want bright light. Uh, you want to be able to rest. Um, and you want to keep the diet simple. You know, we, uh, we don't want people to have caffeine. Obviously, with kids, we're not or shouldn't be worried about alcohol intake, but caffeine, alcohol, that sort of thing are typically uh, a bad idea uh, because they can aggravate the symptoms. Tylenol is probably a better option than aspirin or Advil in the first 72 hours, mainly because Tylenol doesn't tend to promote bleeding. And uh, sometimes there can be delayed bleeding after head injuries. It's rare, but it can happen. I went to my pediatrician three days after my concussion and they really, I don't think they were as educated on concussions as, because they just told me to rest at home for a week or two and then I'll be fine and it really wasn't, I, now it's my 11th week. Mm. I just got back to school full time two, three weeks ago. So wow, I mean. So how many, how many days of school did you miss? Oh, jeez, I just got my report card, and so... Roughly. Well... A week, two weeks, three weeks? 23 days. Wow. Of French, and 12 days of... I've tried to go to my high school courses more often than... Um, yeah. But, yeah. A lot. 20 a lot of school. To so what were you thinking through well, all this? From a parent's perspective, we were referred to the concussion clinic by a friend who'd had a concussion. Okay. And what we found was that we went to our pediatrician who said, yep, you want to keep the noise down, you want to keep the light down, go home and rest for a while. And right. her concussion happened the week before Christmas break, so very easy for us to just say, look, you're not going to go to school this week, and we have three weeks before we have to deal with anything. Oh, good. And we that found, was good timing, actually. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. We, we found that the best information, unfortunately, the best information we got was from other people in the community who'd had concussions. Is there a website they can go to? Um, well, the American Academy of Neurology certainly uh, comes to mind um, As with, symptoms really with lots of information. Uh, National Institute of Health, NIN, NINDS, National Institute of Neurological Disease and Stroke, has an excellent website that, that is, has topical vignettes on any and every kind of neurological problem, including concussion. Those, those are two good, good mm -hmm. places to look. 
How many of you took pain medication? Okay. Do you think it, Matt, how long did you take it? I took it when we didn't know that it was a concussion. Um, and even a couple, uh, basically until I went to the concussion clinic and they were, they asked me if the pain meds were working and I'd know and they said that's because you have a concussion. Advil, Tylenol, that's not going to work. Um, so that's when I stopped taking that, it. That's all you took? You didn't take yeah. something stronger? Yeah, no, it was just... Advil. What did you take? Um, I went to patients first. They just told me to take Tylenol. Then I was referred to patient, or referred to head, um, head to head and they gave me a prescription to a higher dose of Tylenol or Nadville, and that's what I'm still taking now. Okay, who else? Pain medicine, what'd you take? Um, when I went to the hospital the first time, they gave me what they call a migraine cocktail. I'm not really sure what the, one of them was Zofran. Sarah? I'm not sure what the other one was called. No, okay. I, I don't know. A migraine cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super exaggerated or something, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. So that's what I took. Did it, it help? Not really. It kind of um, lessened it a little bit, but it didn't really very much touch it. Head to Head doesn't really believe in a lot of medications, just the healing process, which we'll right. show that interview now. And uh, Although sometimes, you know, if there's a neck injury associated with it, sometimes, you know, I had a client recently, um, the nurse practitioner had um, prescribed Flexeril to help with the neck pain, and, you know, that really seemed to help get over the neck injury. Okay. So. Yeah, so a lot of the time they have the neck injury with the head injury. Mm -hmm. And that can mask the symptoms of the head injury. If they're right. taking the pain medication, they may not even know if they think it's... Who said they had a whiplash? You had a whiplash. So did they know it was a concussion too at first, or did they just think it was a whiplash? They went in and they said that it was a migraine, and then they basically said, well, it just seems like minor whiplash, so they sent me home. Okay. Yeah. It's hard when you have migraineurs because they get a lot of the migraineous headaches are very similar to concussion headaches. Although concussion headaches usually, well, usually when you get a concussion, you can find one spot that it hurts there or even the, the opposite side where your brain kind of hit one side of the skull and, you know, contra coup crash to the back of it. But migraines is the same thing. A lot of times you get pain in one spot. So it's, it's different than the tension or headache where you get kind of general pain. So there's, that's why we really try to interview with the headache and try to figure out what kind of headache is it. Is it muscle tension coming from the neck or just tension in the muscles in the head and the face? And is it concussion headache, which typically is more like of a throbbing, pulsating, um, and it can come and go depending on if you haven't eaten in a while. It's amazing. Sometimes rather than popping the Tylenol, Having a snack, a protein snack, a cheese stick, does much better than the medic medication. And drinking lots of water because you can get the dehydration headaches too. So it's just important to keep all the snacks and the drinking up. And that doesn't mean like snacks like ice cream shakes, which I found very disappointing. I said, what? <laughs> no frappuccino. No, we <laughs> We're don't supposed want to avoid sugar, caffeine yeah. and avoiding, avoid sugar. Yeah, avoiding sugar and well, simple well, crackers. I was going right. to ask your daughter, you're, you had the black eye yes, from, the, from the ball, uh -huh. right? The yes. softball. So her, what's your first name again? Maria. Maria. So Maria's concussion was obvious. I mean, because she had this this eye. But well, she had more of a black eye. They didn't yeah. know at the time. They, she was swollen shut. She couldn't play. So that yeah. was kind of good that that happened, right. so that um, you were shut down. Yeah, we just iced it for the rest of the day. And um, I went home, and I, I, felt, I felt fine. And then the next morning, I went to school. And um, my mom recommended I just stay at a gym just for one day, see how that goes. And I remember I was in the gym just kind of sitting out. And there was, like, the fluorescent lights, like, all the sneakers squeaking. Mm -hmm. it, was, mm -hmm. it was miserable. And then I went to the nurse, and the nurse diagnosed me with a concussion. And then um, my mom picked me up from school. And I t also, going back to the Tylenol, um, I had severe neck pain, which I think I probably had whiplash, and I still have it now. I, that, I got my concussion in end of October, and I'm um, still so You're still suffering. It. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing PT for your neck? Um, I was. I went to the chiropractor, but, I mean, I was missing so much school, and that even made, like, the stress even worse because yeah. I was getting so far behind in school, and um, I just kind of went back to school, and it's just going to get better with time, and just kept to have that positive attitude about it. When teenagers have concussions, we, we often hear that they're not able to pay attention, and they're having a difficult time in school, and sometimes they're asked not to go to school. Can you tell us a little about that? Like, sure. why that would occur, and how often that lasts? Sure. I When people have had a concussion, and this is teenagers, or people of any age, mm -hmm. after the initial day or two, they sometimes have persistent symptoms that we call post-concussion syndrome, which includes headaches and 
sensitivity to light, noise, commotion, and trouble concentrating, uh, and feeling overwhelmed and fatigued. And all of that can be made worse by exertion or by being either mental or physical or by being exposed to an environment which is particularly uh, difficult, like uh, a noisy environment, like a, a typical school environment. Or it's a significant improvement in her stamina for the day and her being able to just even just maintain a positive outlook on everything when we started her with the with the vitamins that were suggested mm -hmm. and in eating the the protein snacks that's when i really started getting my daughter back <laughs> took vitamins put, put up your hands great yeah. was that recommended by the hospital or head to head Okay, good job. <laughs> no meds and uh, vitamins. I like that. That's very good in today's world, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so there was one other thing that I wanted to share that I think is important that families know is that my background's in special education. Okay. And one of the things that I feel was a benefit was just constantly reaching out to the school. INOVA offered notes that were so specific and immediate. We did not leave that office without a note describing exactly where she was in this whole process. And to be able to scan that in and send it to her teachers and to her counselor and to the nurse and to the assistant vice principal just made a world of difference. Because um, with the special education background, I have worked with kids with brain injuries. And really, that's what a concussion is as a brain injury, is that um, to know that we need to provide the kids with accommodations so that they can be successful in school and limit what it is that they can do at a time and scaffold their, their learning because that, that can just increase the amount of, of pressure and stress that can even set them back in their, in their healing process. So I, I see think everybody that that's shaking important. their heads. It's very important with to you. know to advocate for our children in, in that academic arena. And there is also some, something called a Section 504 where if your student does not qualify for special education, then you can ask for temporary spe special education services while they're trying to heal. Or, yeah, we used to have kids go homebound in the beginning. You know, in the beginning of our whole program, um, some kids who just couldn't take the lights and the stimulation and the noise, we were having kids stay home more, but then we were finding these kids were just getting more and more withdrawn and depressed and sad and I can't be with my friends and getting behind in school and even though, and they still had their headaches. So we're like, all right, we've, we've now, you know, with the studying up on everybody that's doing this kind of thing, we found it's better to just try to go to school, even if in the beginning it's just passive participation. You're sitting there in body, maybe you're hearing some stuff, maybe you can't even look at that whiteboard. We ask sometimes for the teachers to give you a large print handout that you can just look here rather than looking here, trying to write a note and look at far, focus far, focus near. Sometimes that's just too much for the kids. Um, but then if there's really bad issues, then we ask, mm -hmm. we have recommended the school have a big meeting and get a 504 plan um, in play or a child study, which is a little less formalized than that. Um, so that all the teachers on board, it's something they all sign off on and they have to really do these special accommodations that the kids might need. What I have found, which I think is a blessing, is with normal sickness with the schools, um, it's usually hard um, to get them to understand that the child's out for two weeks, you know, with a strep throat that's complicated, the antibiotic didn't work or whatever, and they're really upset that the, the teenager is missing high school. I mean, at the younger years, they're more um, sympathetic, but as they get older, it's harder. Do you all agree with that? <laughs> but with the concussions, I have found the schools are, no, you didn't have a good experience. I mean, I have found that the schools know about concussions because of the trainers there, and they're they know right away that the kids need accommodation. So I want to hear a little about your experiences, and I'll go around so we can hear about your experience with the school, and then how you guys felt, if any of you got depressed during your head injury, or how long you missed from school, and how sympathetic your teachers were. So. We, we, it was very interesting. Anna goes to middle school, so she don't, doesn't have the trainers and the varsity level in the same way as the high schools. But one of the things that we found is that, you know, we knew that if we sent her to gym class with a cast on her leg, that nobody was going to ask her to run. Right. But we knew if we sent her to math class, or we were concerned that if we sent her to math class with a concussion, that somebody would ask her to think. And the key was, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, well, it's a brain injury. And thinking was very difficult for Anna when this all started. 
good. She couldn't put together concepts in math that were easy for her before her concussion. And getting the teachers to understand that was challenging. We were, the, the concussion clinic was great because every time we left, not only did we get a copy, we got four copies so we could distribute to each of the Very teachers. Nice. Um, and we were lucky because one of our assistant principals had had a concussion a year before. So she took charge of the teachers and that made a world of difference for us. Do you want to share something about how you felt during your brain injury? Did you feel like, oh my gosh, I what's was going on? I was depressed. It, I mean, I'm taking two high school courses and I'm really, I've been, I got straight A's before my concussion and I had been focusing on schoolwork and just to be all of a sudden, like I was an SCA officer and all of a sudden I was at home all day, every day. I couldn't call any friends, I couldn't do anything and I was missing basketball, softball and just to sit at home and you can't to you know you're reveling in your own misery and just you you can't think and so you're just left wondering how did this happen why am I here and wow that's pretty common huh I didn't I didn't go to the Inova clinic until 4 weeks after I got my concussion so um you suffered for a while. Yeah, it was. Long you felt time. alone, <laughs> right? And yeah. not knowing that this is all normal and it's okay and this is just part of it all, and you know, because sometimes these kids don't realize all the emotional stuff that's going on. You know, it can get really overwhelming, and they don't understand that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that this is all normal to go through this. And you know, they will get better and get back to. Did anybody feel that way? Anybody want to share something on that? Um. I would say that when I had my concussions in the past, it kind of, over time, I ended up eventually being like diagnosed with like minor anxiety and depression, which I never had when I was younger. But we never really put the two and two together that it might have been someone contributed to the multiple concussions that I suffered and went through, and I, and which nobody feels great when you're on those medicines and stuff. And when I finally got off those and started taking vitamins and stuff is really when I started to feel better and have a clear mind so mm -hmm. I don't know and um did you miss a lot of school um not really okay but so I think were your teachers sympathetic to what you were going through uh not really I think the biggest thing that uh the biggest is did they, you tell them yeah okay. but they um they slap on like oh you're just ADD ADHD I think a lot of times like, because I got prescribed Adderall because I was having short-term memory memory loss. Yeah, and um, I don't know, just getting enough sleep is a big thing. I think your diet, like eating, like like you said, blueberries, eating good antioxidants, being on good vitamins is the best thing you can do, which there's a certain amount of damage that you do to your brain that's, like, irreversible, but you can actually, like, make it better, I think, by doing the stuff that they tell you to do, which is really helpful through, like, the whole process, like, trying to get better from multiple concussions. Did you have to be patient with yourself? Um, I really did, because, I don't know, it's because when you get told you have an injury, if it's like your leg hurt, it's like there's a difference between pain and injury. So, I mean, you get hurt, you can, um, even at, at, when you're injured sometimes, you can go through it as an athlete, but when you hurt your brain, it's kind of hard as an athlete to be told you really can't do anything but rest and get this better and do what they say. You can't be a hard head and think you know it all and just like push through it. It's something you really have to like listen to them, like someone who's really educated about, which is really helpful about like the Nova experience, I think. Good, thank you. If I could, if I could have one thing, there was something you said earlier about you know, the education of the coaches. And, and something that I've seen, I know they've done out in Loudoun that to me is very interesting is they've taken a lot of it out of the coach's hands. You know, much as you see in the NFL, it's out of the coach's hands, it's into the doctors. Well, in Loudoun County, they have the trainers on site, you know, like you said, but it's only for the varsity athletes. And those trainers have that responsibility now to pull the guy and say, you need to pull him out. Now, I know nobody's gonna to admit to this, but sometimes kids don't go to the trainer right away, especially in football because um, they don't want to be taken out of their sport and the trainers are very cautious and they take you out of your sport. So um, have you heard a lot of that in football where they don't want to? Um, I think it's a problem in a lot more like contact sports and non-contact sports because when you're used to there being contact all the time, it's kind of like the rub some dirt on type thing or if you go hit somebody and you need to come out for a player coach, will be like, all right, get some water. Then they'll send you back out there knowing that even if you've 
hit someone really hard, like helmet to helmet on accident or just you're rattled, they'll put you right back in there without – they because they'll know that if they'll send you to a trainer that you're not going to play, and I think it's a problem. It's just how competitive sports are. Yeah that they're trying to put their best athletes out on the field at all times. And even if they'll take, they don't really want to take you out in like a big game situation or something, even though it's at a high school level, which I think is wrong, but it's something I think there just needs to be more awareness of. Right. Yeah. I'm out of school right now, I'm uh -huh. at work. Uh, Did you miss a lot of work? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, were they sympathetic? Uh, kind of at first. It doesn't feel like it anymore. <laughs> okay. What have you found? Oh, we without knocking the people at work. <laughs> without knocking, right. we don't want to get you we, fired. <laughs> yeah, um, we went with uh, with our regular uh, doctors uh, at first, and uh, we didn't realize. Um, when we, we were uneducated about concussions, and we thought it would be a real quick fix, and uh, we did go to head to head, uh, but since he was more. Uh, Working and wasn't able to go back to or uh, able to go back to work, uh, we did have to go the workers' comp route, and we found that work was a little more receptive to ideas with it being a workers' comp doctor writing the notes. Gotcha. Uh, but we did get uh, referred to a neurologist because it was taking more time, <coughs> uh, and the neurologist was the one that did request the MRI and did prescribe the um, different medications. Uh, he's actually on a preventative migraine medication right now that he has to take daily. Um, and then we did go back to head to head for uh, uh, to see the therapist for a few more times. But, you know, slowly he's still missing work. We're still trying to- What's know, he doing at home? Back. Oh. I'm in the basement. <laughs> it's dark there. Yeah. <laughs> You're not doing dishes? It's dark in the basement. I'm loving it there right now. If the patient after a six to eight weeks is still having deficits with memory, attention, concentration, um, even emotional issues like irritability, um, they are referred for a cognitive language evaluation. So have you had any of the depression, like you can't go to work, you can't do anything? A little bit, yes. Yeah? So how are you dealing with that? Just... I'm not really. <laughs> just, well, you're in the beginning of stages, right? You, this is a pretty new concussion, how many? This is my first concussion, but it happened on October 19th. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So did you do the MRI, CT? Yeah. And what did they find? Uh, nothing. Well, that's good. Nothing. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good, right? That's a good thing. Nothing is, no news is good news. Many so times. he said October. How long does a usual concussion take to heal? You know, a typical first mild concussion. More severe. Yeah, so the normal one is like between two weeks and eight weeks for somebody who's never had a concussion before. Um, you know, some are, feel great even before two weeks, but some, you know, usually at the worst it's eight, but then sometimes you get these kids, especially with different medical histories, with a history of migraines, with a history of ADHD, or history of prior concussions, different things can make those symptoms last longer. Or if you didn't address it right away and you just kept going to school and doing everything even though it hurt, that prolongs the recovery too. Um, and you know, it's this people like you that we were like, wow, you really should just go see a neurologist. This isn't you know, this is post-concussion syndrome. This is not just the acute stages that we're there to manage. I would say that probably um, most patients who have a mild concussion never come to see a neurologist because mostly the good news is that they get better within a, within a reasonably short period of time. You know. So, uh, I want to add something. Um, she said something about um, previous medical history. And um, ever since I was young, maybe like five years old, I've always had headaches every day. And oh. even before the concussion, I'd have them every day after school. And you like you just kind of like suck it up. You know, it's just like I'm a part of the schedule. Oh, a little headache at 3 o'clock or whatever. And, Tired, need yeah, water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> need a snack. And um, I've also had some eye problems. Um, m the muscle in this eye um, never went all the way. And, um, and your eye? And the eye. And that was the oh. eye that got hit. And um, oh. I've it, that's been made it even worse. And um, okay. when we got to the point, we didn't know if it was a concussion headache or a previous headaches. And like she said, like the migraine headaches and the concussion he headaches felt pretty similar. And um, I've been having to go to like all these types of therapies and with the eyes, and you can get a lot of headaches for eyes too. So you did their ocular 
ocular system? No, I didn't do it there. Um, they recommended a vision therapist, and ah. I got um, some exercises to do at home. Oh, good. So that, Is it helping? Um, I guess. I mean, I haven't really noticed a difference, and just trying to get through it. <laughs> Okay, you yeah. you will get through it, right, Sarah? They will get through it. It doesn't yeah. feel like it. Sometimes it just takes time, you know. And, and as far as the vision, you know, we'll start off with a few little eye exercises if that's what is indicated. But generally, if things are still the eyes aren't converging like they should, or different issues are still happening, we'll we'll refer out to a developmental optometrist that. They usually like to wait a while till you're recovered from the head injury, at least two months, I think, before they want to start their therapy. And usually when you go to vision therapy, it's like three times a week. It's a big commitment for a big chunk of time. Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of get through it to really see the results. So, um, But it's a big time commitment. It's hard when you're going to school to get down there. And so we have about 10 minutes left. Who wants to share something about what we've been discussing that I might not have touched upon? You do? OK. <laughs> Your son is dying. He's going under the chair now. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I have a confession to make as a parent. Um, for me, um, I didn't know a whole lot of the symptoms and the possible related um, depression or anxiety or whatever. And uh, I think it was hard at times to distinguish between what is normal teenage behavior? Are they rebelling in some way? Is it, it just gets confusing? It gets very confusing about yeah. how to decipher you know, what's related to the injury, what's related to them just being teenagers that aren't always pleasant. And I'm sure, <laughs> not, I'm sure you hear this a lot. Yeah. How do you know? How hard is that for you? Right, so. well, that's why we have, we have a score sheet when they come in and we just try to kind of give it a number to see the irritability level, the um, sadness level, the emo you know, just different things so we can kind of see the trend. And yeah, well, we have these discussions worry, in front of the child with the parent saying, Okay, your mom understands. We kind of even just lecture the mom. Listen, your kid has a concussion. He can't help it when he has these rages, or he just she can't help it when she breaks down crying, and this is concussion. But then you also say to the kid, okay, so this can't go on forever. You know, you, <laughs> there comes a time you can't milk this, and you need to, you know, have control over your emotions. Well, too, we had so. none of that, and I think that if there was some way that this, you know, you, you talk about the coaches, you talk about the um, doctors, the pediatricians, but the parents really don't have any information. So if there was some way they can incorporate in the school, you know, you get a concussion, if they could just, it'd be simple, you just have a sheet of paper, maybe something that the head-to-head -head could do to get incorporated in the schools, just so that they're aware and know, because I think it would have reduced quite a bit of my frustration, mm -hmm. not that I don't love my child, but mm -hmm. there were just times that I just didn't know, and I was like, well, why is he not doing this, or can't he get back going, or you just, you're just not quite sure, and I think something like that would have really helped me, and not that I wasn't compassionate, but I think there were times that I could have responded better as a parent if I was um, a little bit more aware of what we were dealing with. Um, can, I, can I throw one thing too? Just, sure. You know, she talked about the awareness of the parents, and I wanted to just take a different angle on the awareness of the parents, and that was we, we've talked about the coaches, we've talked about the trainers. No one should know their child better than the parent who's watched them. And I, you I know, agree. I go back now, hindsight. You know, and she and said, you have to, who said, you have to advocate strongly for your child. Did you say that? Yes, yeah, and, I agree. And, you know, we, we talked earlier, and you saw the video, you know, at the, that we talked about and you were adding in, of in the state tournament. Well, after he bangs heads with the kid hard enough that both are knocked out, and they put them both back on the mat, and then I watch him walk out and lose his balance and fall, at that point, I should have stopped. Depends on the, of course it depends on the severity of the injury and we all have to use common sense, but normally um, if, it's, if there's been an obvious head injury and uh, if there's been either a loss of consciousness or um, if, if a person is confused or cannot go on with the game, they should be taken to the nearest emergency facility, uh, preferably where there's a CAT scan available. We are competitive, you know, in this area, um, in the D.C. area, and um, they're athletes. That's why they go out there and they get a bunch of concussions, so it's hard. And yeah. the coaches have their, their key players, and they're in the middle of a state championship, and they're like, no, he's got to keep going. Yeah, and <laughs> and it's, it's, it's really hard, but yeah. we have to remember that it's their brain, mm -hmm. and they have to take their brain... You know, I have a cheerleader, and you know, she competed with a concussion and did her back handsprings, and she suffered a lot, a lot longer than she would have had to, had she been honest and went to the trainer and didn't hide it from the coach. But 
they want that's everything to them and they really do they have to understand it's their brain and they're just going to hurt themselves yeah. more i have one last thing that like as an athlete i think we're told that it's like so important like sports are so important but the more concussions you have and the more like i've experienced a bunch is that if I could have gone back, it's like you kind of wish that because sports aren't everything. It's like because once you go into the business world, like you have to use your brain. Like that's the one thing you always have to use. Yeah. And they don't. I don't think they really put enough stress on that. Is the more concussions you get, the more it affects you, and it can like make your life harder sometimes. But I mean, it's not like a road that you can't like come back down and like kind of like recover some. And that's I think the best thing that I kind of. That's great out information. From Inova, but like to other athletes, like once you start getting concussions, like. To maybe think about like maybe you should stop before you start getting more and more symptoms like she said how it gets worse the more that you get where before they said oh you should stop after you get five or six as before maybe if you get a couple bad ones maybe like that should be it for you yeah play a different sport yeah yeah go ahead sure um i got my concussion september 12th so it I love how beginning. they remember these dates. Yeah. These dates are like, oh my gosh. It changes your life. Um, so wow. it's the very beginning of the school year, and there's so much pressure in the schools to be taking all AP classes and all honors, and that's what I was doing. And um, I've had to drop all of them pretty much because I couldn't keep up with missing so much school and not even missing school, but being there, but not being there. Yeah. Um, but the school, between the communication of the clinic and our school, I had so much help from my guidance counselors and figuring out what's going to work for this year, the plan for next year. And um, my nurse practitioner at the Head to Head has already said she'll write notes to the colleges. My guidance counselor said he'll talk to them. So like he was saying, like in the moment, the sports and school seem like they're so important, but the recovery is so much more important than that and colleges will understand my peers understand my teachers understand i have found um, with a few kids that we've heard from that unfortunately sometimes the kids don't understand they're like oh gosh i got five concussions i did okay i went right back to playing what's the big deal so it, it's very hard to be in those positions and i've heard that and i know we have to go i know cnn did a big special on concussions with exactly what you're talking about. And I remember seeing one of the football players, he was raking um, hay, and he said, I was really smart back before I played football. <laughs> and I wish I would have listened, because I just can't do it anymore. He goes, but I was a great football player. <laughs> but now I'm raking hay. And I was like, oh my gosh, so glad my son couldn't play football. No, I love football, though. I'd love to go watch, as long as my son's not playing. <laughs> so the suicide, um, real quick, um, obviously, we're going to put up some intervention lines, but they can go to head-to-head -to -head if the depression is so bad. And you guys understand that if they're so depressed um, from everything they're missing, education-wise, um, sports-wise, you guys will be able to steer them in the right direction, and it's Absolutely. not odd for them to have those feelings. No, it's all normal. You know, and sometimes just hearing that, like, oh, this is depression because of my concussion. I'm not crazy. I'm not feeling all these weird things, and I can't focus because of the concussion, and it's not me, you know. And just sometimes hearing that just gives them the relief to just have them breathe and be like, okay, I will get better. And sometimes just that's all they need. But then we have also tried to put together a peer support group for some of these kids. Um, you know, I tried to organize it. Um, we have a social worker that works through I know of Fairfax. We're going to have to and come see you guys because yeah. our time is up yeah, and they are ahead. plaguing us. But thank you so mm -hmm. much for being with us, Sarah. And thank you all for being here today. And I hope everybody out there has learned a lot about concussions and uh, gets to Anova head-to-head -head when they need to. So thanks very much. We'll see you next time on Teen Say. Bye-bye.